Made Right. A sandwich that when made the first time, got its name because it was Made Right. And since then, it's been a Midwest signature classic. And we're here to give our take. You wanna see how we make this Made Right loose meat sandwich? Then stick around while we dig, dig in. in. Hey, welcome back. I'm Adam. I'm Brett. And we are the Wall Twins. If this is your first time here with us though, welcome. welcome. Consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything we do no matter where we're doing it. Today we're throwing down at the Backyard Diner and I'm super excited for this yes. one. Big shout out to Big Kent. Yes, Big Kent. Hi, right? Daddy Dutch Barbecue, who a while ago recommended we do the loose meat sandwich after we did the New York chopped cheese. In yes. fact, a lot of our friends, friends. from the Midwest, yep. right after we did that one said, hey, you ought to do two, the pork tenderloin sandwich, which we did, yep. and then this Iowa slash Ohio slash anywhere else in the Midwest that we didn't name right there. Love the sandwich, this specific one, the loose meat that we're talking about. There's one I think at Ye Old Tavern. Uh -huh. It was a little bit more plain, but it's a loose meat sandwich. Yep. This one was invented by Fred Angel yep. in 1926. He was a butcher from Iowa, happened to be mixing some different various seasonings along with his ground beef. I, th I believe it was a postal worker that came in, he served yes. it up to him and said, hey, you know what? This, this sandwich, sandwich here is made, made right. right. I'm sure that's exactly how he said it. And there was a, I, 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 like, I like to imagine there was a piano music in the background. <laughs> Maybe. Someone play on now the, look at here, you see. On the you ivories. Done, you done made that right, you see. Okay. Yeah, this is the bee's knees. Right. The cat's meow. <laughs> the cat's meow, right? <laughs> that could have been. Maybe this is the cat's meow hey, sandwich. We don't, know. we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. We weren't there. But we do know they call it the made right. We want to simply give our take. Now, we've done a lot of research, so we've got to do a quick shout out or talk to our I Iowans, our Ohioans, <laughs> our people from Ohio and, and that region. We know there are a lot of different ways to season this and a lot of different ways to do this one. We're keeping it simple. Yep. We watched George Moat's way of doing yes, it. Yes, we did. He did a little bit more simple than we're doing it, but we have a reason why we want to. We get to the grocery so people know what we're putting in this one. All right, so right here we've got up front, we've got this beef broth and a little bit of Worcestershire. We got some 80-20 ground beef, some Worcestershire. There it is. <laughs> we're going to be topping it with uh, just pickles and mustard, no Ketchup, or we'll get yelled at and probably right. fired. We're gonna put them on these Martin rolls, and we're gonna be doing some onions as well. Right, I guess it's heresy if you uh, end up putting ketchup on this. Listen, do it how you like. In different regions, they do use ketchup. We are keeping it simple yes, as a pickle. Yep. In fact, if you don't put anything on it, uh, that is the ye old way of doing it, the oh, old okay. tavern way. But also, if you put cheese on it, then it's called a cheese right, ah, which I ah, considered ah. doing, but I thought we'll keep it pure for this one. Sure. The beef broth is a specific process that we wanted to do because part of this is actually steaming this. Yeah. So we're gonna use it to steam once the meat is almost done. Mm -hmm. We bring that, we're, we're gonna saute the onions on the side, but let's walk you through the process. Let's just go ahead and get to it. Here this we is go. what we're doing here. All here right, so first things first, Brett's gonna butter up the griddle. Well, just a little bit of butter. Or a that, lot of it. <laughs> Apparently those are gonna be some super buttery uh, onion. <laughs> the griddle is nice and clean. So this is one thing we love about this griddle. We have done close to 80 cooks on this and we just do soap and water on it and it just looks brand new again. We yeah, absolutely and, love this. And for what it, this is our third cook of the day on yeah, this. Yeah, third so, cook of the day. We have just a little, a little hot water and soap after the cooks and it cleans right up. Yep, if it gets too gunky, we do have a cleaning video where you can use baking yeah, soda Yeah, deep and clean. Water. But we do love it. Ready? And Brett, yep, go ahead and drop those there. So uh, they're not gonna sizzle. Brett didn't realize, I just told him, I just turned the griddle <laughs> what, on. What happened is, we were trying to decide who's doing what part of the cook. So I decided my job for this cook was gonna be saute the onions. I gloved up, came back, grabbed the butter and the onions and started cooking and Adam turned around and said, um, I literally just turned on the griddle. I didn't know I was inside getting the butter. That's true. Oh, that's very true. All right, well, let's go ahead and give those a few minutes and uh, we'll be back. All right, so Brett went ahead and put some salt and pepper in those, even though there's really no pepper in this cook. Oh, that's right, that's right. I forgot one thing is there's no there's no pepper, it's salt that's only, okay. but um, when that's sauteing, okay. we always saute with salt yep, and A little bit pepper. of salt, pepper, and butter. So, yeah, so that's this is, it. again, our take on this. Correct. Yeah. I hung all the spatulas right there. I'm like, dude, you've got spatulas for days. He told me, I said I needed a spatula. Yeah, I got spatulas for day, <laughs> days. So those are just about done. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cook up our ground beef right here. And this is all we're going to do is just cook this up. So the idea is to cook this and just kind of chop this up and break this up, creating, well, loose meat really yep. is what's gonna happen. All right, so this is starting to release. 
So now what I want to do is just cook yep. and chop that up. Another thing you'll see in here, you'll see some of the fat that's coming out. One thing that we really like about cooking on these griddles is a lot of that fat just moves out of the way, or we could just pick it up and drain it off to the side because while this meat is still cooking, we're gonna add the beef broth and the little bit of Worcestershire that we have in the mixture here, and it's gonna actually steam and help the cooking process on the beef. And, 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 and season it as well. That's the truth. All right, so this is just about browned through. We're about to introduce the sauteed onions. So what I want to do is I want to drain some of this oil. That's a lot of grease. We're gonna, we're gonna preserve some of it. So now I'm gonna put this here and get the rest of this. This is a trick Brett and I actually just kind of figured out on our own when we're draining some of the, the fat. Now we don't want all of this fat. We want a little bit for the flavoring, but not all of this. In fact, we're also most gonna get of it a lot, will go. Remember, we're gonna get a lot of flavoring also from the beef broth right. so that we're about to bring in. What I wanna do is now that this is cooked, I'm gonna bring the temperature down to low on this side because now this is gonna kind of, we're gonna incorporate some things. So I'm gonna bring in the onion. Turn off this side. All right, and then Brett, go ahead and grab that beef broth. Yes, sir. Now the idea is to just like this, let this steam and then just kind of cook. So we're gonna get that in here. You can smell a little bit of the Worcestershire sauce. And we're just gonna mix that in. And we, we, we brought enough beef broth for actually two pounds of meat. I forgot we only needed half oh, of this. I would have only put <laughs> My half bad. Had I yep, known. That's okay, that's okay. In fact, let's go, go ahead and let's just shove some of this down. So bring in as much of this as I can. because we're So this is gonna steam in this broth. So we did take some of that out, sadly, but we've got the rest of this here. And look, so now it's calmed down a bit. All we're gonna do is just get this to cook and steam through so that the flavors kind of marry until it's ready. Now we, we do kind of want this wet when we go ahead and load up our buns, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, it smells really good. Yes, it does. It does, and I've heard this, this can be a rather plain dish. We'll see, and I'll give my honest assessments if we love it or if it's just okay, you know. Yeah. And the last ingredient we're adding is just a touch of salt for flavor, and that's gonna be it. Now the beef uh, broth does have some salt as well. Yes, it is. Well, it's full of sodium, so that's right. salt. Yep. Sodium there is salt. <laughs> there you go. All right, All right, so we're gonna finish this up here, and then uh, oh, we're just about ready for some B-roll. We're gonna get the buns ready. Uh, let's go ahead and get this, Ken. There it is as it I just shoved the hole. There we go. There it is in all its glory. Yes. I gotta say, this is one of those where I'm like, I'm just gonna be honest if I don't like this. I'm just gonna say it. I still will. Yeah. But my whole mode is like changed. Like, <laughs> I think I'm gonna really like this. Thing. I do too. No, it is still piping hot. Are yes. we trust it? Are we okay to take a bite? We're gonna find out. <laughs> We're like we say out. though, yeah. it can look amazing. This looks I just it looks like a as, as loose of a meat sandwich as you could get. And can I can I make a point that I was trying not to make a whole time? I think you upset people from the Midwest. It's not a sloppy joke. Correct. It's a loose meat sandwich. Yes. People say it's like a sloppy joke without the sauce. It's just ground, brown, browning the ground beef with a lot of seasoning. Yes. But like we say, it can look amazing. Yes. Like we say, it can smell amazing. Can I get a smell? Uh, yes. Smell? Like yeah, gravy. you can. <laughs> it does. But if this doesn't taste amazing, this was all, all for not. not. Cheers. I'll eat to that, my, my brother. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my mm. word. Yeah, oh my word. George Motes said, if you close your eyes and take a bite, you're like, oh, it's got all the makings of a hamburger. Yeah, right, thank you. And then you look, open your eyes, it's not. Hold up, I need one more bite. Kenzie's like wanting this so bad. I just need one more bite. This, I am, I will go to Iowa for this. No, to anywhere in the Midwest. We'll we'll make it right ourselves. here, make it ourselves. This. Unreal. 
I'm really, really impressed. Kent, thank you. Thank the, you. And you know, to the many others who re recommended this. You know what? And, and wow. Call me crazy. Crazy. This tastes like crystal. But mm. better. But better. But better. And I'm saying that with the most respect. Okay. For that, I love going to Crystal. You do like, love going to like Crystal. Or like White, White Castle. Mm -hmm. With the onion, the mustard, and the pickle, but the meat, it tastes like there's a gravy in it. And it I know does. That's, the, that's the beef broth. And our dad, growing up, he made what we call the poor man's, the poor man's goulash, right. which is not ground even close to goulash. Gravy. Ground, ground beef and gravy over mashed, mashed potatoes. potatoes. That, yep. As far as we knew, that was goulash growing up. We loved that's it. That's what this meat tastes like. I love I'm going to wait. This really just tastes like a juicy, tender beef uh, a burger. That I is am, so I'm really, really, really impressed with this. Uh, and part of it too, uh, with that broth, as I was looking through, I want to make sure we preserve some of the juiciness. Yes. That when I put those on with a spoon, I didn't have the big spoon like they have there up in the Midwest, but I want it to be juicy. Kenzie, what are your thoughts? So Really good. And, She's like devoured mine. <laughs> shout out. That's what I got. That's the situation I'm dealing with. That's about and, what I got. So left. here's after my couple of bites. Oh, and shout to Martin's. By the way, these potato buns underneath, it's not dissolving. It's not nice. disintegrating. It actually has the integrity to hold the juices from the beef. Right. I love it. And I did actually intend, I, I, I intentionally added a, a little extra beef. They put so much beef on these that actually the Maid Rights up in the Midwest, uh -huh. up in at least Iowa, maybe uh -huh. Ohio as well, uh -huh. they serve it with a spoon. Right. So that way you can scoop and oh, eat the meat. Oh, so, that's okay. Left I heard Adam say serving with a spoon. I'm like, you are serving with a spoon. He <laughs> no, meant, you actually like your, your dish is spoon. served with right. a spoon. So got you. This okay, is really good. This is another good one. Yes. And I'll be honest, I love the mustard and pickle. Yeah, on perfect. Yeah, I know. I was like, man, why do we got to put these on? This can taste like our version of goulash on a on right. a bun. A lot of people use like the the dried onions that they that they then hydrate. The minced onions. Get uh -huh. back. I mean, minced dried onions. onions. Uh -huh. We just went ahead and used fresh and then sauteed them to get that flavor. Mm -hmm. I love the flavor. I love so the way good. we do this. Absolutely. I will be honest, I would have loved actually a pop of fresh ones on there, so I would like the diced onions on there. I don't know, there. man. It, the, it would the be The only so thing good. I would want on there is cheese. Yeah, that's the, it. The cheese rice? Yes, the cheese Next rice. Time. Yep. We're so happy we came and did this. If you did like this, if this gave you something else that you would like to do or something you could make on your griddle, make sure and give us a thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. It's one way in which you can support us in what we do. Yep. Another way you can support us is through our merchandise. There's a link to that in the description below this video. So happy we did this. Me one. too, man. It was uh, another banger. Another Absolutely. one for the food truck. Yep. Absolutely love it. No kidding. Maybe we'll bring the loose meat sandwich down here to Florida. Who hey, knows? Who knows? Aside from coming to make this banger, another classic from the Midwest. Thank you, Mr. Angel, yes. for making this in 1926. A classic. To his family, thank you, I guess. Yes. Why else are we doing this? Because all we do is twin, no, no matter, matter what. what. And with that, we bid you adieu. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And griddle on! on.